Good morning, everybody. Happy breakfast. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. And I'm the pod father of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. And we're getting some audio issues here. I could not hear all of you just now. Can you hear wow. me? Wow. That is just part of Unfortunately, we can still hear you, yes. That's a byproduct <laughs> of getting old. Um, he did the whole, uh, is my hearing aid on? Right here, let's do a little test, okay? Beep. The, can you the still hear ageism that? in this industry is huge. Huge, I'm just, telling you. So everybody out there, fight with me. Just to clarify, the ageism. the ageism is only here. All right, and it's only opposed to you. We treat Mike Delicio with respect. Oh, Mike Delicio is ten years younger than me. Oh, so there. Oh, that's right. If you're going to admit you're old, I'm cool with that. Um, <laughs> folks, thank you for joining today. It is Thursday. It's the first board game breakfast on Thursday of February. The year is flying by. It is cold here today. It is it was cold. Forty. It was forty-one degrees when I woke up. I was like, I'm not getting out of bed for 41 degrees. South Florida has had a bit of a cold snap. Um, it's beautiful during the day, but, you know, like 60. But it's getting back into the 80s, like starting like tomorrow, I think. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course <laughs> it is. Yeah. You got to enjoy it. it. If you want to enjoy it, you got to get, get on it. So, yeah. all righty, folks. Well, we are going to get right into things. We have uh, contributors, and then we're going to be back with the news. Let's get started. Hi, everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. Today we're talking about Tranquility from Board Game Hub. This is a cooperative game. You and your teammates are trying to get this boat from point A to point B across the board, but you have to fill in this huge grid of cards first in chronological order, and there's no communication between players, similar to a game like maybe The Mind or The Crew, something like that. Uh, so it's extremely challenging. Um, yeah, but it's, we're having a lot of fun with this one. All right, so this is my real and genuine thoughts about this game. I am not a solar gamer, have nothing against solo gaming. I would just play, uh, read a book instead of play a game. This game might change that for me. There's a solo variant in it, and it's all I've been thinking about all day is that I want to get this out and try the solo variant because I just want to explore it more in all its capacities, including the solo variant. I think that's the best way to jump into solo gaming, too, is play a cooperative game that you already know and love uh, and just play it by yourself. And maybe playing as two characters, or not that that would work in this game, but there's yeah. solo rules in here. Um, yes, I think that would work. So we also like to talk about things that we're doing to try to achieve better health in our life. And speaking of tranquility, last night I had a panic attack. Like Super a real tranquil. Life. Yay. <laughs> um, I had done an elimination diet where I discovered there's foods that my brain just doesn't like. And when I did an inventory over the past three days, I realized that I was consuming a lot of those foods. So for me, it's something I just keep track of um, to know that my brain is in balance. Um, do you guys have any tips if you struggle with panic attacks of something that you do to try to keep that in balance? Please let me know in the comments below. Well, you guys, we had a lot of fun with this game. It's seen in the collection, so we can just keep on getting beat over and over again. <laughs> it's that tough. All right, thanks so much for watching. We are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can find us on YouTube or Facebook. But until next time, hope you have a happy and healthy breakfast. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, folks, let's just jump right into the news here. Some interesting announcements. First of all, Wizama, Wizama, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, announces awesome. a new licensing deal with Asmodee Digital. Now, Asmodee Digital is one of the companies in the forefront of making some pretty solid digital games. Yes. Um, well, you're biased, but yes, it's true. Uh, and this is... Another one of the very many of these basically flat iPad gaming system type things. This is a new console. It was a launch on Kickstarter. I think we talked about it, Z. Do you remember? Nope. I do not remember this. I didn't know about this. When I saw this, I was like, is this a console or is this a, a tablet? You know what I'm saying? Does this connect to your TV or do you play it right on the tablet? It raised 182,000 pounds, so it's like a million dollars or something. Um, <laughs> no, it's like $300,000. Wow, you're really good the at pounds math. Are, the pounds are strong. Anyway, 
So the I'm point is, this sure. sounds this is really cool. I mean, it says console. I just want a portable console. Does it? Do you play it on your TV or do you pass this no, thing no, 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 around? No. Do you look at it? And how big is it? This is a big thing. You, you, when you get a chance, go look at the Kickstarter. Yeah, it's, yeah, man. It looks as big as a game board about, or a small game board. And you set it on the table in front of you. It's, I guess it's got to be plugged in somehow. And then when you put cards on the edges, see those those edges around it? Then yeah. that will activate the card. Yeah. And it's also possible that you can put some pawns on the board. I don't know. I don't know how well this will do. None of these has ever yet taken off. Like we're still waiting for the what do you call that when there's one technology it breaks through and everyone gets it? Uh, it's called a iPad. breakthrough technology. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Dominant right. technology or something. Yeah. Cool. Something to that. I effect. mean, this getting Asmodee on board. Asmodee Digital is a pretty strong swing. Yeah. I mean, and all no, these I'm, games you can't really have the game and then play it on this. This is an entirely new implementation of the game obviously because the cards would have to be readable the pawns have to have a near field technology built into them right i mean like all of that stuff so game of thrones is the one i can't figure out how they would do there's a lot of pieces in that game well you there's a little drawer you open and it comes with knives in there you just stab each other <laughs> right in your eye um i'm excited about this just because i love the blending of tech with physical so i want to i gotta i'm now i'm gonna go research this thing and see what the cost is and you know that's a reasonable cost because i want to get involved with one of these but i don't yeah. want to buy the wrong one i don't want to buy the you know the the technology that didn't you know the who lost against blu-ray was that hd vds HD, or something hd dvd yeah i don't want to want if you want to be uh, if you want to use the the correct and appropriate term you mean betamax you old man. <laughs> Betamax <laughs> lost. You're right. I didn't say that. Anyway, defenders. this is cool. All right. This... Anyhow. Um, next. Sorry. Hey, Bonacore, was there a competing technology for 8-track tapes? Do you know? Was there something 8-track like... tapes lost to... 8-track tapes lost to cassette tapes. No, but they, they both... weren't at the same time, right? Like cassette well, tapes kind of supplanted them. No, they, they were both out at the same time. Uh, in fact, cassette tapes were out much before it. A-Track's really? like, hey, we got this new cool thing, and it was not new or cool. It just it was just worse. So Okay. Did not know that. All right, cool. Yeah. In fact, all right, a little quick. Uh, my oh, first boy. car, my first car, I had to decide, well, was I going to put an A-Track player in or a cassette player in? And I went with cassette player. My friend said, "My friend said, no, 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 this eight track thing's not going to take off. Go cassette." I put cassette in. I was right. That's awesome. True story. True story. <laughs> Sorry. 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 I did, but that was I true story. There. All right. Aww. Next we have. But that's not nice. The listeners Meeple. liked it. Meeples and monsters. Now, when I first saw the, the this title, I thought, "Oh, it's Bezier Games," but it's not. It's actually AEG. Um, this just looks because he did that mutant meeples and and whatever. This game is the game sounds interesting. It's done by um, Ole Steinus, Steinus who yeah. did um, yeah. Champions of Midgar, yeah, which yeah, I really yeah. like. Yep. And it yep. looks even kind of like that. I my biggest concern with and also AEG puts out solid games. I just hate the title. I really hate the title. It's just well, it's so in industry. Like if I if someone doesn't play board games, I'm like, hey, you want to play Meeples and Monsters? It's kind of like, oh. I agree. I hate the fact that we're starting to use Meeple, like just sort of buzz terms in titles now. I don't really like that trend. I'm, I'm, I, I I really nothing turns me off of a game quicker than seeing that the the word Meeple, which means nothing and is kind of like a joke, joke, wick, wick word is now in the title of the game. And there's been a, a few, more than I'm comfortable with. Stop yeah, they're, it. They're, they're obviously playing off the fact that the meeples are painted in this game. So that's like the big, yes, but one of the big selling points, whether it's a good game or not. Games. That's the selling point. Carcassonne's not called Meepleville. You know, it's called Carcassonne. Didn't have, didn't have painted meeples until yes, recently. They put cool are you things like, into on it. On Kickstarter, like every game has painted meeples at this point. You know, it, again, I, I felt like this is just trying to, to jive into that. And it might be a fantastic game. I'm really looking forward to it. I just don't like the name. 
Whatever. Uh, this one's not. I don't like the name, but that's neither here nor there. I don't really. I'm not loving what's happening here because I don't really like this fantasy kind of setting. But he is a good designer. There's no denying that. So I'm curious to see, you know, how well this does in this upcoming you year. You don't like the fantasy setting? You and I are no longer speaking. This looks. Okay. This looks. You're very on my generic. list. Eric, you're this on my looks list. Like you know, I mean, if it's Lord of the Rings with this rich you know mythos yeah but this looks like yeah come on no it has the word meeples in the title the depth here isn't exactly uh you know meeples and monsters it's, <laughs> it's it's meeple thick that's how that's the depth of it meeple thick. yeah there you yeah go. now i right. i, I want to see what they're doing so renegade has announced a new version of world's fair 1893 this is definitely the year to announce reprints and reworkings of stuff i think we had like four last week and this is a game I didn't expect to get it. Also, interestingly enough, this is an Amazon exclusive, yep. which is... Uh, Renegade's getting very nice comments from local stores on Facebook, I saw. Um, <laughs> so I'm having a hard time telling, besides the cover, what's different. It looks similar. I, I don't remember. Z, it's been a long time well, I know that they changed. Uh, they needed to reprint the game anyway, so that's part of it, okay? And they changed the the cover. They did that, but also, I believe a big part of the what is different here is the inclusion of historical figures that are more diverse. That's what they're going for. Got so it. They, okay. they are including characters and well, people. I should say not characters, people from history from the time period who are not included yes. in the original printing of this uh, to make the game more diverse. And uh, that's mainly it. I think mechanically, um, I don't believe anything is changing in this game mechanically. Uh, just, you're exactly right with that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me, can I address the, the, the exclusivity thing? Um, this is going to happen more and more um, from the publisher's standpoint. They give a, short-term exclusivity for a company that cuts them a check for 30,000 units. So you just see that you have to accept this. If you if you want the game, it will be available at your friendly local game store. And I completely encourage, and we'll have a story about supporting local game stores in a little while here, but the, the publishers have to tap into this market occasionally. And this is I, what they're I doing. I 100% agree with you there. And it's foolish. It's easy to be an armchair quarterback, but when that deal comes in front of you, yes, that's kind of insane for you to say no. And this also grows the you hobby cannot. as a whole. The fact that Amazon yes, and does. Target and Barnes and Nobles want board games badly enough to do this is amazing. Yeah. The f the f the fact that you can walk into Target now and pick up Jaws of the Lion, which is, right, that's where it was for six months, and now it's available elsewhere, too. The fact that you can do that is such a great thing for the hobby. And I'm sure that Cephala Fair got a very large check to make that happen for a short period of time. And now you can pick it up wherever you like. And it will stay in print, of course. This game is going to stay in print at your local game store as well, or Amazon, uh, or wherever you want to get. We'll see. I hope so. But I'm, I like this game, and I know Z liked it, too. But it didn't. Yeah exactly become one of the biggest hits of that year and i i don't i'm curious if we, i don't know maybe this edition will help maybe mm -hmm. it's a good game it's a very pleasant game engaging simple clean but yes it also does not necessarily have a lot of uh have a big retention factor as far as you know making it back to the table over and over again but right like you said maybe this will have a a better time at that mm-hmm all right, we mentioned this in the past, that Z-Man Games had a new edition of Carcassonne Hunters and Gatherers coming, and now they're showing it off. It originally was published in 2002, so this is the special 19th anniversary edition. <laughs> um, anyhow, I like the art on this a lot. It looks good. They have some new tiles involved in it, and I'm, I'm guessing that that meeple there is the shape of everything. In this game, which is kind of cool, if they have a, if they picked a different shape, he's a hunter, or I guess he could be um, a gatherer or a gatherer possibly. But uh, uh, hunters and gatherers obviously didn't get the same buzz back in the day as the original Carcassonne. Uh, but no, it, it is buzz. It, it, no, no, it, it certainly did. But I 
sales overall. Um, That's obviously, correct. Carcassonne way, way exceeds it. But this is a, arguably even a better game than Carcassonne. I, I, I haven't played this in 15 years, probably. But this is a excellent, excellent implementation of Carcassonne Plus. Right. Yeah, this is uh, there's more going on here out of the box. I think Carcassonne yes. uh, eventually caught up to it because of all the expansions. They were able to explore a lot of the ideas that are in here and mm -hmm. beyond that. Yes. And actually, now, when again, they did I, that Around the World series, Z, a lot of that came from this, too. True, yep. true. I do feel like they've kind of... <laughs> I, I feel like now this is twice that Hunters and Gatherers gets the short end of the stick... Because it happened the first time back in 02. Yeah. This gets announced. Uh, this got announced a while ago. This is now the first time we're seeing images. This got announced, I don't know, a month ago or two. And then on the heels of that, they announced this gorgeous new edition of Original Carcassonne. Yeah. 20th Anniversary Edition with beautiful new artwork. And, I mean, like, okay, come on, again. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I think when the time comes... I'll be picking up a copy of regular Carcassonne in the fancy edition. So sorry, hunters and gatherers, again. All right, not sponsored by any kind of bubble gum. We have a new game called Juicy Fruits. Mm. Uh, Interesting. This is, this is from the co-designer of Pictures, which actually doesn't do them any favors in my eyes. But it looks very different than that game. Capstone Games is bringing it out in the U.S., and Capstone Games has a really good track record of bringing over pretty cool ones. The last time I played a fruit game, what was that? Finca? <laughs> About yeah. fruits. This looks... I don't know. This one, it has me, I think. I, I like wooden fruits. I like the board aspect of it. There's a grid. So you see, know I'm on board. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do love grids. I think there should like be a whole line time? of these food-inspired things, man. I'm telling you. Juicy fruit. If I, think, I get uh, this and it's good enough for the library, I'm going to put a, a pack of gum inside the box. That's right. And I heard uh, Red Raven was coming out with a game called Now and Later. <laughs> so there's that one. It's in the same family, <laughs> not, I think. It's Now or Never. <laughs> now or Never. That's well, a great one. It's Now and Later, like uh, like <laughs> the candy. and that. Uh... I do like my Now and Laters. All right. Also, uh, oh no, ne so next we have Warlord Saga of the Storm. So if you never heard of Warlord, this is one of the uh, collectible card games that came out back when they were everyone was making one. And this was one that AEG did. It used a 20-sided die, and you had these big leaders, overlords, who attacked the other person. I actually really enjoy this. It's, it's in my top five CCGs. And I was really excited about this, and my excitement has waned a bit because this is not a new edition. They're not reprinting it. I emailed them, and they told me they are not getting back in the card game. This is just a love letter to fans. Here's some more cards, some more stuff. I think you can play this on its own, but they haven't changed the graphic design or anything. So I am like, oh, that's nice, but my excitement has waned quite a bit. Yeah, yeah this is like a limited time expansion, too. I think you have till tomorrow to, till tomorrow to pre-order, I believe. So the 5th oh. of February, if I'm not mistaken. So this is like, this is, you're right, Tom. The best way to describe this is a love letter. It's like, hey, thank you. Here's a little something, but we're not really talking about this. That's kind of what they're, what they're doing. But, but you can play it out of the box. At least we hope so, because that wouldn't make any sense to release. No. The, the pitch is a little might, unclear on that. I think this huh. might just be an expansion, Tom. Wow, I don't that would be. Playable. I think that's a miss. I think that's a lost opportunity. I mean, to at least put out a playable game. I don't know. That's very it's not available. You have to, this, you're not going to go anywhere and buy this. I think you pre-order this from them with a limited deal. window. And they send it to you, and that's it. I, I don't. Yeah, this is a smaller piece of news than we thought two weeks ago. Oh, I'm yeah, saying. when I first heard about it, I was like, yeah, Warlord's coming back. And, uh, oh, okay. More cards. That's cool. I'll stick it in my box full of all my cards. And maybe we'll play it or something. I, I think a copy's on our way, on its way, Z. Yeah. So, um, okay. Okay. I got Roy. I don't need you no more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's like these games. <laughs> all right. Rorschach. 
is a party game for four to ten players. This is not the first game called Rorschach, because I've already done one called this. And it's one of my most viewed videos of that year, because the year I reviewed it was the same year the Watchmen movie came out. So quite a few people watched it. We're like, what is this? There's no one beating other people up in prison. <laughs> it's a very different game. Uh, also, I'm not interested in this very much at all because it feels like a lazy game, if that makes sense. There have been like, a lot of games like this. I mean, I remember these things being at Toys R Us 15 years ago. They just mass market games based on Ink blots, right? So, so you're this game right. Is not I about someone they, who was stuck in prison. No, and if it was, it'd be a little more interesting. But this so, is, I, I agree that the word lazy is a good way to describe this, Tom. I don't know mechanically what's going on around the ink blots, but ah, come on. Also, monkey and uh, beehive and. Uh, a guy escaping from prison. That's what that looks like. No, that's a that's a beetle, and that's a and that's a, I don't know. I'm no, I don't want to play this game. All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know this. Have, have either of you ever done an ink blot test in real life? For real, like like meaning it. Yeah, I I never have. I told my I I'm not allowed to talk about that. My uh, my therapist said I really shouldn't discuss it with everybody. So got it. All right. That's what I just said, Mister Eloquent. <laughs> he stole your joke. <laughs> All right. I know, but he said it better. So you know what? <laughs> we okay. okay. We played. We played, we played off each other. You we played off my joke, each other. but you deliver it in a better way. I tip my hat to you, sir. By the way, thank you. Mr. Dreadful joined as a member. Thank you, sir. All right. This has been a rough, rough podcast live stream. What have we got? ICV2 is releasing a pop-up t-shirt collection to support local comic and game stores. Okay. Um, and so you can buy these shirts to support game stores. This is a Bonacore story, so I let him no, tell more. So this is... This is uh, a um, a continuation of the what Alliance Distribution did um, early in the summer, where they put oh, out the back comeback the comeback. greater than our setback. Yeah, the back the comeback, and I I mean I I was part of that. Um, I, I I got one of their T-shirts. They they just wanted some industry notables to get get the T-shirt, go out to the stores, post on social media. And I was full on, and I think it was a very good thing to try to do to help the local game store who were obviously decimated during during covid they were shut down or they had to do it was really bad and, and, and so i i was big on this icv2 has done something similar where you can buy a t-shirt that, that that says that you're supporting your local game store they've got three different shirts you can buy them uh and the uh the proceeds are going to the jack Bassel memorial fund uh who obviously helps gamers as well as a, um, a another one, Comic Book United Fund, uh, which is a similar thing that helps people, um, uh, game stores or something like that. I'm not sure what what their focus is. Uh, so I just think this is a great a great thing that if anybody has a few dollars and they want another cool T-shirt or three, there's three different designs on it to go to ICV2 and pick up one of these T-shirts, which directly help gamers and game stores. They're cool designs. I do like the look of them, and they are. Yeah, nice colors too. I like the red one for some reason. I don't know. I don't know. All like right, blue. Um, one. I like the middle one. <clears throat> the guys have said we've talked about this before. I don't remember. I just got a press release yesterday about this. Getting old. Who's getting old? Well, no. I mean, I look through my email. I check. I double check on these things. Um, and Luma and Bombix are are they're going to be bringing Bombix games to the U.S. and other English language countries. This is actually very interesting to me. Luma is a, a, a title that most of you folks don't know very well, but they are bringing a lot of smaller companies to America, um, a lot of games I really enjoy. And Bombix has traditionally, and I think in Europe, still work with Asmodee. Um, mm -hmm. I know that, Z, you're a fan of a lot of their games. I am. Uh, I just reviewed one of their games, actually, that went up... Uh yesterday or the day before and it's another good one they don't have a ton of releases but they are typically 
quite good and very attractive games. So, yeah, I am a fan. All right. Well, if you want to keep your memory, Bonacor, pay attention to this new story. Um, bo- board games are great for Alzheimer's patients. Oh, man. So this is this... a study done by Asmodee, of course, um, which always it's always a little suspect, right? It's like, hey, board games are good for people. Sponsored by Board Game Publisher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but yeah. also a game and lab research group. And so they studied the impact of board games with patients between 75 and 97 with moderate cognitive deficit. And the research proved that games can be good. So go play games with grandma and grandpa. Yeah. Um, Over, overall, I've always believed that this hobby was good for us. Um, good for gamers because the more you engage your mind and in different ways than just, you know, I don't know, you know, going to work and doing things, the more you engage your mind on deeper levels, the more you're using it and the more like a muscle, right. it continues to help. I've always thought that with no proof. Now they're saying it's good specifically for Alzheimer's patients or those with mild um, um, cognizant deficit. That's fantastic news, and it probably helps us as well. Well, when we start that board Tom. gaming retirement community, aren't you supposed to be spearheading that in 10 years? In 10 years. In 10 wow. years. Wow. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Um, I, no, I've actually started it already since I'm retired. <laughs> Yeah. You're the only one. He's yeah, yeah. it's a club, club <laughs> of one I, over there. I bought one of the Valencia homes uh, communities here. I'm waiting for people to move in with me. <laughs> I want to say thank you to John Whitesnake and to Ainvar, both who are now new members. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. All right, Root, to the shock right. of nobody in existence, has announced a new expansion. Uh, this is the Marauder expansion. Bringing in the Warlord and the Stone Seekers. So this so is two, two, new factions. two new factions for the game. That's basically it. Yes, but it said that these two factions are going to be specifically geared for the two-player game. So okay, that's cool. Some of the a lot of the factions, I think it says here, the total number of two-player factions are up to five without the use of bots. So right now, not all the factions necessarily work well, even in the original game. I wouldn't want to play the Vagabond, who's one of the four factions, in a two-player game. You know, the two-player game is Cats versus Birds or Cats versus uh, the Woodland Alliance or et cetera. Um, so this is interesting. I mean, Mike is going crazy about it here. There's also minor factions. So small factions can be used at any player count. I don't know what that means. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, nice. it's going to make a mint on Kickstarter. It will. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta try this app, man. I gotta, I gotta get the app for this uh, for Root itself and and try That's it right. out. There I've is, never, there is an never app played. for this. I, yeah, I agree. I gotta do this too because everybody talks about it. I've never played. Speaking of making a mint, Stonemeyer announced their new game that's coming out in a month or so or two months. Uh, Red Rising. This is based on a dystopian novel series by Pierce Brown. When I heard about this, I said I need to go download these books and read them and realized I had already downloaded the first book and stopped reading it. Uh, Well, I couldn't get past this style. It's written in the present tense, and I have a real hard time reading present tense books. It's it's like I I punch the guy. It it talks about stuff if it's happening now. It's a style choice. Well, I was like, like, yeah, I walk in the room. I look up at the ceiling. That right? Yeah, and I, I have a real see, hard time uh, with that. Donkey <laughs> dangling from its hooves. I say, "What's up with you, donkey?" Like I'm that, try right? To go back and read through the book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna push through it now. If there's a game coming out, I always like to read the book. If and it's based on a book, I, I will force my way through the book here. Um, <clears throat> I really like. I have not been ex- that excited about a Stonemeyer announcement. You know, I don't think I've been as excited about any of them as I am about this one, to be honest. Not that I'm giddy over here, but I am really looking forward to this because it sounds like one that I, that is very much going to appeal to me. Sci-fi, like 13 factions or whatever. Uh, a lot oh, of lore sure. to pull up from, which even if I don't know, it means that the, there will be a lot of flavor in there. 
card game, mainly, is what it sounds like. They reference Fantasy Realms for the combo building and Libertalia for the hand management. No. Uh, dude, yes. Uh, this yeah, sounds very exciting. Yeah, and as you were saying that, I was like, oh, yo, oh, because oh, I didn't know anything about it really until I'm looking at this and hearing what you guys are saying. Um, this does sound really interesting. Like the cover too. It 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 does scream of that like kind of futuristic kind of look to it. I like this. This is a this has got lots of potential. Yeah, man. Everyone wants to hear Z's new book now. Someone in the comments call it the Donkey Chandelier by Z Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey Chandelier. Wow. Where, uh, where, come on, Z, you need to go copyright that title. Uh, right, where, I'm on it. where the I'm protagonist buy, walks buy the into rooms right now. and describes what he's seeing in real time to you. Watch anyway, him folks, do this. I will go back and uh, the defenders of the book are in full force in the comments. I'm not saying the book is bad. I said that I had a hard time with that style. I'll go back and read it. Don't worry. Um, but great cover here. Amazing cover. And... It's going to sell like hotcakes. It doesn't matter what the game is. Stonemeyer games sell that well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he had sounds me, good. Sounds he had me not at Libertalia, actually, but at the Fantasy Realms, because I love Fantasy Realms. But I will say this. Stone, uh, Jamie has been in the past, I feel, a bit loose when he says a game is like this. Because I remember when Scythe first came out, he's like, do you like Agricola? And then I played Scythe, and I thought, this is not like Agricola at all. That really? I, yeah, just, I mean, it, he's saying combo building, hand management, right? I mean, I don't know. This sounds like a card-driven game with a lot of combo building. I I assume I'm going to like this. Oh, someone said on the Stonemaier website, it says reviews of this go up February 22nd. Um, there we go. I feel confident <laughs> that, that that should clarify if we have a copy or not, because we're just guessing about the game right now. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, there you go. We'll get a hold of one at some point and play it. It, it looks it looks fun. So, alrighty, that's the news. Let's go back to contributors, and we'll be back for a game show. Hello, everybody. Alex Swire Clark, emotional intelligence expert here, and today we're going to be looking at code names. Which personality styles does this really have the potential to hit a home run with? Who is going to be drawn to it? Hey, hey, with me, with me. Uh, okay, never mind. <laughs> This Chivato design from CGE is a team versus team game where you are trying to discover your team's words on the board while giving one word clues to your team. But be careful, there is an assassin on the loose. If your team chooses that card, you'll lose faster than a hapless henchman taken out by James Bond. So which personality styles will code names appeal to? Well, for the spy masters, the ones giving the clues, the high C's are really going to fit well here. They like to have time to process and think, so Codenames can be a very thinky game, so they're going to try to make as many different connections as possible to get the most clues out that they can possibly get to. However, high C's are very risk averse, so they're not going to typically go more than two clues per word, you know, two words on the table. They're going to be really hesitant to try to give out water three or dog four. That's just going to be very, very ooh, kind of scary for them because again, they live in the moment and want to make sure that each one has the potential to maximize their turn because they don't want to miss a turn or have a bystander get hit or heaven forbid the assassin get hit during their turn. The high S styles are really going to enjoy being on the team member side because they like that collaboration and they like to be able to kind of be a part of the team. Hey, what do you guys think? Being collaborative without having to be in charge. So for the styles that this typically won't appeal to right off the bat are your high D's and high I styles. High D's and I's like to move fast, talk fast, think fast, but party games that move have a lot of interaction, have a lot of really energy to them. And code names, depending on your group, could be one of those where it's very rigid, very thinky. Have a happy breakfast. Hey there everyone, it's Jen the Board Game Librarian flipping some pages and pushing some cubes with my segment from the page to the table where I pair books and board games together. 
and create happiness and joy. Who doesn't love books and board games? Uh, this week, uh, we're going to take a look at Vanessa Diffenbaugh's The Language of Flowers. We have a young woman in here who's 18, has been in the foster care system most of her life, and she uses flowers, the Victorian language of flowers, to communicate with people. Um, she has a secret in her past that's going to be exposed. Um, but the flower imagery and is just so wonderful in this book. A lot of really good questions are raised in this as well. Uh, I'm going to pair it with one that is um, published by Grain Gamers Guild here in the U.S. and that is Rare Roses. This is a um, game where you are collecting roses, you're maturing your roses along, and based on whatever maturity level they are, you are looking to fill orders. It's a really sweet game. I don't feel like I say that a lot um, in the reviews that I get to do, but this is just so sweet, so charming, and for a particular audience. I, I've talked before about games that are appealing to our female audience, and Rare Roses is one of those. It's the beautiful artwork, um, it's a husband and wife team that worked on it together to design it, and it's just, it's, it's charming, it's very charming. So if you get an opportunity to pick this up, it's it's like a, a gateway style game, again, perfect for getting more people into the hobby. Um, that is all for this week. Happy breakfast. I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex, and today I want to recommend a really fun, quick detective game, Sherlock 13. Most detective games take like two hours to play and they leave you feeling like the dumbest person of all of the people. You know, you're like, why am I watching Law & Order marathons all the time to be this bad at detective games? But Sherlock 13 only takes like 10 minutes to play, so if you feel dumb after this game, well, that's not the game's fault. In Sherlock 13, each player will have a privacy screen, a clue sheet, and a number of cards in their hand, you are asking questions of other players like, Scott, how many light bulbs do you have? And recording that information up here to try to deduce which card has been removed from the game and is thus the killer. Dun, dun, dun. This game is so fun and quick that you end up wanting to play it over and over. The first night we played this, we ended up playing it five times in a row, which is great, because then multiple people get a chance to win, people leave feeling good about themselves. I mean, I, I never won a game. Um, not one, honestly. I, you know, I was joking earlier, but like, should I stop watching Law & Order? I just, I don't know what I'm getting out of it. Oh, All right, we're going to do a slight variation on a game show I've done before. This is all about games this time, gentlemen. And trouble. what I did was I did some searching at Board Game Geek for various topics. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you – you can't look at Board Game Geek, you cheater. I heard you typing. Um, I'm going to give you six words that I searched for, and you want to pick one of those, and depending on how many – hit results it got on Board Game Geek, you're going to get points. Ooh. So if you get if you get the number one, you're actually going to get negative two points. But other than that, you'll get four points for picking the second, three points for picking third, two points for picking fourth, one point for picking five, and no points if you pick the lowest amount or if it has zero results, which some of them do. So again, we want to pick the second most. You can also, when you make your pick, if you can think of a game that has the word in it and that exists, you will get double points. Now, you don't have to do that because you could double your negative two. Oh. Um, oh, you a devilish you. cat. You a now, devilish cat. And finally, don't forget <laughs> that BGG searches <laughs> include not just the word I put, 
but any larger word that includes that word. What do you mean? I what do you mean? So like if I put in Ra, for example, and it, that would show up in Railroad Tycoon. If you put in a really small word like the, it's going to be in a, it's I'm going to be the there then because you're going to yell. Ra is going to be in a million things. All right. So the yeah. first category okay, tell is us the points again, please. It's negative two, four, three, two, one, zero. Four, three, two, one, zero. I got it. I'm ready. Let's go. All right. And this includes anything that shows up, whether it's expansion, a promo card, whatever. Here we go. Right. The first category is animals. So the, the, the choices are gecko, chimp, not chimpanzee, but just the word chimp, um, bengal, as in the tiger, uh, leopard, giraffe, and zebra. So we have gecko, chimp, bengal, leopard, giraffe, and zebra. And, yeah, just, uh, and, and for clarification, ch chimpanzee would be part of chimp. It would come up with it. Just making sure. I would we, it so. would. Yeah, right, just making sure. Pick a number from one to six, Mr. Bonagor. This, this is random to see who goes first. I picked five. All right, Z, you're first. Which Why? one do you want to pick? Because you picked in the second half. I picked one through three, and you oh, picked okay. four through six. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm going to go with... Oh, well, I mean, I got... <laughs> Leopard. Is Leopard, do you have a game? Oh, garbage. I forgot about that part. Uh... Uh... You can always make up a title and see if it fits. It's always possible. Leo the Leopard? Okay, thanks. All right, uh, Mr. Bonacor. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go with Zebra. All right. And I'm going to say Zebra Party. <laughs> all right, all right. So the lowest one here that no, neither of you picked, that would have got zero, Bangle. is a game called Chimp and Z, Pesky Pirates. And no kidding, Z, your name's in this one. It's, so it's Chimpanzee, right? It's the title chimp of the game. Chimp and Z. That That's the, the only a... chimp game? That's the only one. Oh, wow. I thought that was going to be a pretty high one. I just think it's the, funny. That was the yeah. title of a failed TV pilot I shot once. <laughs> And Z, you, they, you and a monkey going on you, vacation together. They tell you never work with animals, Z. That was a bad idea. That's why we were like, we can't do this. One episode was enough. All right. The second lowest was Gecko, which had four entries. So we're still on target here. Let me quick make a count here. That one has six. Uh, this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This okay. one has one, two, three, four, five. So five, it, this is the, the next lowest, is giraffe. Neither of you picked giraffe. Mm-hmm. And this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's the most. All right. So then we have Bengal, which not a single one of them has anything to do with the animal. They're all about the Bay of Bengal. Okay. Bengal. I figured, I mean, I, my thinking actually was, and this might be wrong, but I was thinking zebra would be number one, leopard would be number two, just because zebra is a very bored, gamey looking animal. It's got stripes. That helps with like geometry in games. I or agree. Think about it, bro. Think I about agree. It. Unfortunately for you, there was a Operation Leopard in World yes. War II. Yes. And because yes, of that, I knew there that. are no, more leopard games. No, uh, come on. What about Attack of Zebra Beach? <laughs> Unfortunately, neither one of you got the names right. But that does start Mr. Bonacore off with four points and Z with negative two. This game is Bonacore's hot garbage, Tom. I'm telling terror. you right now. This is a... It's an outrage. It's a it's ridiculous. Outrage. What is this? I'm, I feel like I'm testing an, an alpha <laughs> prototype here. This isn't even a beta yet. Alrighty, the next categories, actually all the rest of the categories are going to be food. So we're going to start with vegetables here. I want to, I hate to say it, but the first category was also food. I actually, Z, that was my original plan, and then I thought that was too harsh, so I stopped. I, um, I don't eat too many geckos, personally. <laughs> all right, They're all over the place go. out here. 
They are, right? Yeah. So we're going with vegetables first. We have mushroom. We have tomato. We have onion. We have lettuce. We have spinach. And we have peas. Okay, am I first because I'm losing? How does this work? No, it's just going to go back and forth. Mr. Bonacor is first this time. You'll fix it later. Um, These rules are soft. They're mushy, like a a nasty mushroom. I'm going to go... The word peas there, and you pick (laughs) mushroom to be mushy? All right. I'm going to go... (laughs) I'm going to go tomato. Tomato. Not to be confused with tomato. Tomato. Uh, you say so what whatever you want to say. What's the game, though? Tomato. Oh, and the game is Tomato Party. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the answer for every entry. I love this. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> All right, Z, what do you got? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with peas. And I'm going to say the game is uh, Peas in a Pod. There's got to be a game called Peas in a Pod. I know a better one. Uh, That actually is a good one, but I would have gone Peas and Q's. Yeah, baby. That's that's a good one. That's not in there, but that is a good name. It's a pretty good one. All right. I like yours. The for the lowest is between onion and lettuce. Yeah. Incidentally, the game for onion is called Cripple Mr. Onion. And I'm not sure I want to know more about that. It only has four people. And the and the lettuce game is BLT, baby, lettuce, and tomato. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, okay. So I'm, actually, means- I'm actually surprised at how few some of these have. I would have thought each one would I know, have several. right? Like, like I ones? I meant the main Is in only two games. What other word is also in both these games? Baby. Popeye, Popeye is correct. Yes. <laughs> no one right, had that? All right, no. then the third lowest is Bonacor with tomato. There are nine games with tomato, and you might have heard of Tomato Tomato. No, um, I don't think so. There's also a game called the Big Fat Tomato Game, also Giggling Elmo's Hot Tomato Game, and also, mm. again, Baby Lettuce and Tomato. Uh, so, anyway, oh, yeah. that's three more two, points for you. Two, man. two points. Three. It's going to be the place. top. Pe- well, peas is going to be the top. And the top one is 14. Well, yeah. Z, once again, peas is part of the word peasant. You know what, Tom? <laughs> Jerk is part of the word. I know. And now I think about it. I understand that. Jerk. That wasn't so really actually, a word. It's like a Martin sentence. had 12 and peas had um, 14. But, but is there a game called peas in a pod? Oh. There is one called Past the Peas, which no one has ever said. So I feel like that's a lying of a game. All right, let's jump to some other food here. So so, so, so far, I'm doing quite well, is what you're saying. Negative I four believe points. So okay, negative four, and Bonacore has seven. All right, let's go to some more kinds of food. First one is the word burrito. I burro. Then, then we have curry. Curry. Then we have stew. Then a delicious sandwich from Pennsylvania, mostly hoagie. Wow. Yeah. Then roast. I do like eating a roast. And then steak. So we have burrito, curry, stew, hoagie, roast, and steak. And Z, you get to pick first. All right, I'm just not going to go. I want to just pick something that is not the top pick. And I think burrito is not the top pick. And throw, throw burrito is a game I know exists. Done. Good night. <laughs> All righty. Uh, what about you, Mr. Bonacore? Um, I'm going to take curry. And obviously, curry party is a game. Curry party. <laughs> Oh, where we all nice. get together Jesus. and who can eat the spiciest curry? I think that's a great, great one of these game. Has no results. Which one do you think it is? No results would be I think roast? it's curry. I think it's curry. 
No, it's steak. That's weird to me. All right. Steak party. I'm, I'm, there's, Z and Denver's I will go, with we'll only go one usually. answer, Hoagie, and there's only one game called Hoagie. I actually did sub first and then forgot about the fact that there's quite a few sub Submarine. games. Submarine. <laughs> that will be number one. Actually, I'm going to let you all off the hook. Stew is part of the word steward. So, or stewie for family guy. Or all kinds of things. So there's a lot of stew games. That was the number mm. one choice. So you're both getting points. All right. Unfortunately, you got fourth place, Mr. Bonacore, Curry. Only three results, but that's still two points. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only one here is, I, I don't know that you got any of these. There's one called Katsu Curry. This is not the time for that. Uh, I don't know. So uh, that, that's the whole title? Yes. That's fantastic. There's a lot of roast games. In fact, you could have picked Coffee Roaster. That would have been a good oh, choice. Yeah, yeah, oh, I yeah. I keep forgetting. There's like, eight of those, roast. but I published so it. That's second place. The third place is Burrito. and But you did double it, so you're going to get six points that round. Whoo! Back in the positive, baby. Roast or Burrito. You could have also picked Taco versus Burrito. No. And come on now. <laughs> All right, um, so right now the current score is nine for Mr. Bonacor and two for Z, but that is a comeback of sorts. Yeah. All right, Okay. let's jump into candy. We have the word Tootsie. We have the word bubblegum, one word. We have the word jelly bean, that's two words. We have the word taffy. We have the word truffle. And we have the word um, gumdrop. One word. Uh, yeah. I missed gumdrop, the second one. Goes truffle, taffy, jelly bean, bubble gum, and tootsie. <clears throat> Who's first? Uh, first. Uh, you are first. Um. I'm going to go with Bubblegum. And the name right. of the game is Bubblegum Bubble and Z. Oh, okay. Bubblegum and Z. His follow up movie to Zebra and Z. No, Chimp and Z. Oh, Chimp and Z. 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 Bubblegum and Z is his next movie. That's terrible. And it goes direct to video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Z, what do you got? All right, my pick is going to be Truffle, and my game is Truffle Shuffle or Truffle Snuffle. I know both exist, so. I'm just going to count one of these. All right, last place here with no responses is Gumdrop. Second okay. last place here with two is a tie between Bubblegum, Adventure Ooh. Time, Card Wars, Princess Bubblegum versus Lumpy Space Princess, and Bubblegum <laughs> Crisis. You should have got that one. Um, and Taffy. Yes, you're going to get two points for that. All right. Two points for both. Okay. And it's five. I thought that was tied at five. Oh, we're saying tied uh, at four. Tied at four. I'm, going, I'm counting backwards. Yeah, um, right. Then in a third place, we have <coughs> Tootsie. Three games. Tootsie Roll Train game. Then second place has four games, and first place has six. Yep. Second Great. place, Jelly Bean. And first place, Truffle. And Z, you're correct. Truffle Shuffle is a game giving you negative four. Negative four points. Gosh, I love this game. I'm back right to negative now, two. That is correct. It's 11 to negative, negative two. two. But but listen, if you get the top answer and double it, Z, um, there's still hope for you. Let's can go to some more answers. Can we, can we just call it off? We cannot. Let's it go off. to your favorite category, drinks. Wave the white flag, Z. Wave the white flag. All right. First drink, lemonade. Second drink, whiskey. Ooh. Third drink, vodka. Mm. Fourth drink, Coca-Cola. Really? Fourth drink, root beer. Last drink, milkshake. So we got lemonade, whiskey, vodka, Coca-Cola, root beer, and milkshake. 
All right, I'm going to go with, uh, it's me first, right? I'm going to go with Lemonade, and I'm fairly certain there is a real Grande game called Lemonade Stand. All right. Coca-Cola has has the chance of being number one because who God only knows what they they did with that. They might have put out all. Oh my thing. goodness! Yeah, all the Uno versions and Monopoly versions so and risk. I'm gonna risk go, Coca-Cola is good. I'm gonna go with whiskey, and I'm gonna actually gonna. Try. You know all the games that have that word in them, because no, I don't know any game that has it. But I'm gonna try. I'm I'm gonna maybe say that there was a game called Whiskey Express, having nothing to do with the drink. <laughs> all right, good. What good, about good whiskey call. party? Whiskey Party would have been my answer, but I think maybe Whiskey Express. Right. There was a so, sequel called Shame Sleepover. <laughs> in, in last walk, place, Walk of Shame was another one. Here, Kitty Kitty Milkshake, only one, and the Root Beer Float Challenge. Those were Thai, only had one each. Oh, wait, Vodka Party also had only one. So there's a tie for second with nine votes each, and one has ten. So okay. second place, the one that you did not pick, either one of you, was Coca-Cola. That had Ooh. nine. And yes, there is Coca-Cola Uno. <laughs> so of course. there you go. Right. Of course. That, but yeah. Second place, also Ty, whiskey with nine and lemonade. And <laughs> see, you pick lemonade stand, which is a game. <laughs> so we're tied at so what? I, I get four <clears throat> points. You get four points and Z gets negative four. So it's currently 17 to negative six. Wait, why do I get ne- This is the top answer? It was the top answer. Please Lemonade had second 10. Place. Second Got was it. whiskey and Coca Cola tied. Don't mix oh, the two. Oh, 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 whiskey and Coke, which I am after this game, uh, going to look <laughs> into those games. <laughs> All right, let's go to spices. So what's my score right now? Negative what? Because I doubled it. So negative six? Six. Negative six. Um, so the can first please, spice can we call the game? No. The no. first spice is ginger. No, I'm coming back. The second spice spice is oregano. Third spice paprika. The third spice cinnamon. The fourth spice thyme. That's T H Y M E. And the last spice chili. All right. Who goes? So we first? have <clears throat> ginger, oregano, paprika. Cinnamon, thyme, and chili. You're first, Mr. Boniker. I thought I was well, first. I'm going to... No, you were first last time. Okay. So, I'm going to go with... Well, okay, I, I can't even make any... I'm going to go with ginger, and then I'll comment after that. Well, do you have a, a game? Oh. Ginger and Gilligan and Z. That's my game. You're not even trying. You <laughs> have luck. <laughs> All right, Z, what do you want? Maybe a, it might be a game. With, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go with chili, and I'm going to go with the great the great chili cook-off, I believe, is a game. All right. Yeah, but too bad that's the number one answer for another negative four points or whatever it is. Rhyme that's the time is the only time game. Two Only two games with cinnamon. I was surprised on that one. No games with paprika. One game with oregano. So you guys are correct. You got the number one and two answer. But, Mr. Bonacore, ginger is part of the word gingerbread. And there is a lot of gingerbread games. Uh, 15 of those. And there's only eight. And Z is correct. The highest ranked one is the Great Chili Cook-Off, giving Z eight points and Bonacore minus two. I'm back to two points. (laughs) It's now 15 to two. Oh, Okay. But wait, I always double the points of my final question. So if Z, if you get the top one here and you get the correct answer, that would be 16 points. And, and if Bonacore, Bonacore gets passes it, out right before he answers. And if he gets the second answer, you win. <laughs> if Bonacore right. has a stroke, you yeah. win. Come on. All right, let's do it, Tom. Why not? Long shots. Here we go. Uh, I'm rooting for you. Speaking of long and shots, I also be looking into that. I forget. (laughs) There you go. Okay, let's go. What is it? Hang on, I'm counting. Here you. Okay. (laughs) Great, great. Thanks for the preparation on this, Tom. All right, the first one. Well, you mean like the 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 topics you're giving us, right? 
Yeah, the first one is dinner. Mm -hmm. The second one is supper. The third one is lunch. The fourth one is breakfast. The fifth one is snack. And the sixth one is dessert. And you know what? I'm actually really <coughs> pushing this category. You're what? what you're saying? This? I said I'm proud of this category. You're proud, proud of it? I'm sorry, you, you broke up. Proud of it. Okay. I'm proud sure of why. this category. Okay. All right. I like, Who I goes like first? This, I like these words. Uh, you're, uh, Z's first. Okay, I'm going to go with uh, Snack, and I think there's a game called Snack Attack. All right, Mr. Bonnegar? Well, I'm going with Dinner, and I'm going with Dinner Party. And because there's got to be a game called Dinner Party. That's it. Done. I hope. All right. Actually... Well-known game, Dinner, Z, and the Chimp. Actually, <laughs> there is. You were close. <laughs> Just as a heads up, uh, there is... Uh, Donner dinner party, but you didn't say that. Uh, oh, Z and I have both I, played that. But I good should. news, a game came out in 2011 that says dinner party. So yes, your score will be doubled. All right, let's start with the lowest one here. Uh, that would be supper. Only three games was supper. Second lowest here is 10 for dessert. I was surprised. I thought there'd be a lot more games called dessert. I yeah. That would be very high, yeah. Third is um, breakfast, because a lot of people skip breakfast. Uh, I'm sorry, I was fourth. Third is lunch. 27 games have lunch in them. Oh boy. So the top two, there's 38 and 67. <laughs> the top ah. one is dinner with 67 entries. And... Oh. Snack Attack is a game. I said things were doubled here. So, Z, you got 16 points, and Bonacor, you ah! got four, bringing the totals to 11 for Bonacor and 18 for Z. You could have just picked the normal. You could have picked one that you thought was low and won. <laughs> I am inevitable. <laughs> like that. Like that. I am hating life right now. Oh, my word. I, that's why. I, never give up, children. Never give up. <laughs> this was a lesson. I was giving everyone out there a lesson in life. Never give up. Never surrender. All righty. We got a couple more segments here, and let's round out this show. Hey, guys. It's Deanna. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you another fun game you can play with your kids. And today, I'm going to be talking about the game MyCons. MyCons is a quick card game for two to four players. The game includes 50 double-sided cards. One side has an object on it, and on the other side there is a characteristic such as color, shape, or taste. There are also several four-leaf clover cards that serve as wild cards. To begin the game, each player is dealt five cards, which they will place in front of them with the object side face up. The remaining cards are placed in the middle of the play area with the characteristic side face up. One card is removed from that pile to become the discard pile. On your turn, you try to match one of your object cards with the characteristic card that is on top of the discard pile. If you find one that matches, you discard it with the characteristic side of the card face up and then it's the next player's turn. If you don't have a card that matches, you draw one from the draw pile and either add it to your cards or play it immediately if it matches the characteristic card. Play continues until one player has played all of their cards. You like how you have to explain your cards to other players? Yes, I think it's a fun thing to do. You think other kids will like this game? Yes. So far, our family has really enjoyed playing my cons. I like this game is both educational as well as fun. We're able to kind of talk about your different senses and help to identify different characteristics of things. But it's also silly because I like to hear the kids when they're rationalizing their cards to other players. So we have found that this game works well for a variety of ages in our family 
and it's definitely one that we enjoy pulling out and playing together. But that's gonna be it for today. I'll be back next time to share another fun game you can play with your kids. Enjoy the rest of Board Game Breakfast. Hi, Stella. And Tarrant here from Meeple University and the Dice Tower. What do we have today, Tarrant? Well, we're going to uh, delve into, I think everyone who's played a lot of games sometimes gets a massively important rule wrong and completely breaks a game. So we're just going to tell a fun story about that. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to think that we're really bad at rules or something, but I don't know, it happens. We just, we just see a lot of them. It's yes. very easy to get a number wrong, which is all that happened here. Zombie Teens Evolution, it's a nice little uh, co-op game that came out this year and First couple of, I mean, it's it's not the hardest game, and we do win most episodes of it. But the first few times, it was just so easy. Oh yeah, I was um, like, oh, this is definitely a kids game, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. And then after a while, oops, <laughs> we read did. through the rules, and uh, you get two action points per turn, not, not three. three. <laughs> so yes. we were. Uh, that was like a game-breaking error. Yes, so, so we went through with fifty percent more actions than we were meant to have. <laughs> And lo and behold, much easier to beat. <laughs> and have you done anything like that? Um, right in the comment section, we want to know. Hopefully we're not the only one. Or maybe we are the only one, who knows. Or maybe we just told you what you've been doing wrong <gasps> in this game. <laughs> so, um, it's got to be someone else, right? <laughs> He's got hope. <laughs> but some, um, apart from that, Zombie Teen is actually a really good game. Yes. Um, and it might be, uh, you know, just maybe in the top 20 this year, maybe, maybe not. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. We are Stella and Tarrant from Meeple University and the Dust Tower. See you next time. Alrighty, just a quick response here. Someone said, no, God love dinosaurs. My review of that will be coming out, I think in two weeks. I'm actually reviewing zombie teens this week um, on Sunday, I think, or something like that. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. During the downtime there, when you were watching contributors, we were, just consoling Mr. Bonacore. Uh, mm -hmm. But he swears revenge, except the problem is next week he's going up against me. That's problematic, I suppose. I'm okay with that. You've beaten me once, Vassal. Once. And, well, that was controversial. Uh, no, there was no controversy. <laughs> Anyhow, folks, thanks so much for watching. We're going to be back today in three hours at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time with our top 10 anticipated games of 2021. Oh, what are they? You'll find out then. But until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Stephen Bonacore, the podfather of gaming. Have fun eating.